If you were a kid growing up in the 1990s, there's a good chance that you would have heard of Robocop or the Terminator, perhaps not for their less than child-friendly big screen appearances, but more for the merchandise that surrounded the franchises. Plenty of toys were released for both and video games were plenty. Let's take a look at the five Terminator and Robocop games that appeared on the Sega 16-bit console, the Mega Drive, or Genesis if you're watching stateside. This is Rainy Day Retro, whether you're new to the Sega Mega Drive or perhaps looking for a title or two to play on a miserable day, we're here to help with your selection. Let's get stuck in, shall we? Starting with perhaps the weakest interpretation of Robocop in the form of Robocop 3, sticking true to the film, this is a tough one to enjoy. It's been developed by Sculptor Software and released by acclaim in disguise, Flying Edge. Robocop 3 follows loosely around the plot of the 1993 film, with Robo fighting his way from left to right against thugs and OCP's latest soldiers tasked with relocating the remaining residents of Old Detroit. Along the way you encounter other enemies in the form of Ed 209 and drones as well as some weird chicken robot thing. The game is pretty horrible to play. The levels haven't been well thought out at all. There's plenty of jumps to try and time correctly without an untimely death already adding to the cheap shots the thugs and flying drones already get on you is infuriating. Should an enemy position just right behind a box for example, they can shoot you multiple times before you're able to jump over and dispatch them. Robocop's movements are not very well animated either, and the game seems to be overall extremely hard, which as I can only imagine how the SNES version bed with the Sega outing adding extra options to lower the difficulty, chance of seeing the game's entire six levels are pretty dire. Worth noting that the levels are mixed up with jetpack flying sections inspired by the film, but honestly, I could make it to the end of the level 1 boss fight and that's all I could stomach of this. It's just an incredibly mediocre game. Sure, there's some nice touches in it that it use locations from the film, um, you know, you're quite familiar straight away from level 1 that it's a, a downtrodden and desolate old Detroit versus sort of the ritzy glitzy of Delta City, but it doesn't really go a long way when you're trying your hardest to avoid enemy fire and Robocop being the equivalent of a sap. Anyway, the sound is good enough and it's not too offensive, but nowhere near as catchy as the music found in the Terminator games. Curiously enough, this was the only entry in the Robocop franchise that was released based on the movies and TV. Keep in mind that Mega Drive was around from what, 1990 to 97? You'd sort of expect at least a Robocop 2 tie-in, if not Robocop the series. Robocop 3 in video game form is perhaps best represented by its Amiga release, which is a totally different game playing from a first person perspective with driving sections. It's a far superior product, but if you really, really must play Robocop 3 on a console, the 16-bit Sega version is considered the best of the bunch when compared to the Mass System, Game Gear and even Super Nintendo releases. From my own point of view, the most special that I got at Robocop 3 on the Mega Drive was switching the damn console off. But looking at the value of how this game has fared today, now trying to get it on the PAL Mega Drive, you'd be looking at paying £30 for a copy that's in the box without the manual. If you wanted a copy with the manual, at the time of uh, this going out in February 2021, it's £55 plus. That's a ridiculous amount of money. Now the Mass System version also is creeping up in value as well. It's not commonly found in the UK here, the copies I could find were in Spain and Germany. Again, the Game Gear version is also for the power market, again it's around about £35. But back in the trend is the Super Nintendo version, weirdly. Now usually Super Nintendo games are worth a bit more than Mega Drive games out of the boxes, but not in this case. It seems that Super Nintendo players have sort of bucked the trend with this and don't fancy this game. There are quite a few littering eBay for £10 to £15 pounds just as a cartridge only. Again, in the cardboard box, around about 50 quid. Now, I tried to play a little more of this game to bring you some more footage uh, and try to get past level one. I did it a couple of times, I simply just couldn't get past it. It's an absolute tosh game, and even I tried some, to find some cheats for you to see whether there was a way of getting past level one and showing you a little further into the game. But sadly, any of the cheats that I could find for this game simply didn't work. Even right down to Game Genie cheats, I couldn't get anything to run on it. Which is a bit of a shame, because with all the hard work that inevitably developers put into games, certainly in the 90s, you would expect them to at least put the code in so you could see the, the fruits of their labour. But not in the case of Flying Edge and the guys that developed this game. It's just, they seem just adamant on just letting you just see level 1. Perhaps they knew it was already a terrible product, and that's as far as they really wanted you to see.
But still, it is a shame. Let's move on to the Terminator game again by Flying Edge and not to be confused with T2, the arcade game. Oh no, this is the 93 platform and driving game, which was developed by Bits, who also were responsible for Last Action Hero for the Genesis. This game is a curious one. Many have slated it over the years for its slow movement, relentless enemies and weakness of your character. But overlooking that slightly for now, isn't, this isn't a terrible game here. For at least the platform sections anyway. For the opening, you're tasked with finding information leading you to John Connor. You find that levels of familiar settings are based around locations from the movie itself. For example, you start at the truck stop and make your way to the Connor household, Galleria, Pescadero, Compound, Miles' home, Cyberdyne, and finally, takes to the steel meal. Simple, really. Find a future object or two scattered in levels in hidden boxes. Avoid enemies wherever possible. Engage in the T-1000 who will spawn randomly throughout or in earlier levels. Avoiding them completely where possible, you have the lever action shotgun and pistol at your disposal. And work your way up to larger guns later in the game. At the very beginning, you will only have a punch and kick move until you find weaponry, true to the source in a subtle way. In certain levels, you're tasked with protecting either John or Sarah, whilst waves of hazards attempt to stop you in your mission. This can be a real grind if you happen to take a wrong turn or longer route to your destination at the set point in the level. What's different with this uh, game is instead of going from one point to the other, left and right, like most retro games, you're required to explore and this is most impressively used in the Galleria level. Uh, you'll not be able to spot by the cops unless you draw your weapon for combat. Search in the shops for John and completing the objectives along the way makes this particular level of the game actually quite fun. Uh, there's a decent attention to detail and animation is pretty good. Some would argue the levels are mundane settings, but actually, rarely did you see a film license game explore page by page locations of the film that it was based on. Sadly, the platforming aspect is broken up into end of level driving sections. These take place from an isometric perspective and are actually really hard to navigate. Your bike has an energy meter that depletes every time a cop or biker, presumably from the truck stop, smack into you, which would be a lot. If you do not memorize your route, you're toast very quickly, and it's back to square one for you. The controls feel very floaty. Uh, you've often banked against a wall or trapped behind traffic, which makes these sections an absolute chore and let the overall experience of the game down. Uh, which is a shame, as there is enough to like here as a Terminator fan to enjoy it. Um, as mentioned by other gamers, the health meter is quite stingy, and you never really feel like you're a killing machine from the future. Uh, you are graced with an alternative health bar for when your main health has depleted, though, which I guess is, stays true to the climax of the film, where the T-100 powers himself back on against uh, using a rerouted power. Uh, the game saw a release on the Master System and Game Gear, as well as the Super Nintendo. Both 16-bit versions play near the same, uh, so there's no benefit of one from the other. Let us go further back in time with this entry. It's none other than the original Terminator. Keep in mind that the movie was released in 1984, and a video game tie-in appeared in 1992. You'd be forgiven for wondering why this happened. But in reality, you only really need to look at the wild success of Terminator 2 had brought to all those involved in its production, so naturally, Virgin, who most likely had the license rights for the Terminator at the time, wanted to explore the options of bringing a video game based on this universe before the release of Robocop vs Terminator in the following year. So what do we have here? At first glance, the Terminator seems to start off quite well. Set in the future in player's Carl Reese, you're set to find the time displacement equipment with countless tier 100 standing in your way, however. So armed with grenades, timed explosives and a machine gun, you can blow them to the scrap pile and destroy the time machine, but not before hopping into it yourself of course. So far so good. Once you reach the past, you must make your way through the rough streets and rooftops to find a phone box to locate the details of Sarah Connor, blasting enemies but not killing them with your sawn off shotgun, 
hidden under your dirty flash of Mac. However, towards the end of the level, you'll find Tet Noir, the nightclub where the T-800 is closing in on Sarah. After a short showdown, you're off to the police station. In this level, you must once again find Sarah, stunning cops, remember you can't kill them, and frequent encounters with the Terminator, which once again, knocked down, will allow enough time to pass, but honestly, it seems the range on this Uzi 9mm is more than enough to catch you a couple of frames away. Keep in mind that you have a 4 life orb system and one chance of getting through the game, this can be a real annoyance. You'll find Sarah and then you're off to the factory. Here the Terminator is badly damaged, he's down to his endoskeleton and crawls along the floor with no legs. You've already blasted him to hell, you've got to finish the job. Navigating your way to Hydraulic Press for Hasta La Vista baby, except if the Terminator corners you or you double back and he encounters you on your way, your life will be zapped away and from here it's a game over. I think what we've gathered here is how rushed this game is. There's only four levels with just a little bit of storyboarding in between. Sure, the first one was more about evasion rather than engaging the machine, but there could have been some areas that have been added to the game. Car chases, the motel, hell even some fabricated levels made solely for the game would have helped flesh this one out. It feels like a demo for something to which it kind of was. I mean the Mega CD version of the Terminator, which came out in 1993, was far superior, taking the ideas of this game and the presentation that was later used in Robocop vs Terminator to give fans one of the best games in the franchise on the consoles. This game here though, you feel that the difficulty is artificially tuned, but four levels is an insult. If you know what you're doing, you can have this game done while you're waiting for your dinner to cook. A shame then, because graphically, Probe did a good job of creating the levels inspired by the film and the animation is decent. I can't quite understand why there would be the T-800 models underground in the bunker when Reese states in the film that they're new and he had to wait to, to see what they look like in the nightclub. Unless they're rubber skin models, but fair enough, still this storytelling is... that can be used for the game and surely some extra content would have been and could have gone a long way. Time constraints are in my mind perhaps the cause as to why it's quite a short game. I mean the game was released for the Game Gear and the Mass System consoles also, but these are considered their own entries and slightly different to the Mega Drive game. So looking at the value today, thankfully this is still quite a cheap game. You can have a box copy of this game for 10 to 15 pounds. The Mass System version also reflects this around about 10 to 15 quid. And also the Game Gear version is in a similar situation, which a box copy would probably be 15 to 20 pounds, cartridge only probably about five to six pounds. Worth keeping in your mind that the SNES and the Nintendo Entertainment System versions of this game are actually totally different. They were made by Mindscape. Um, you can check out a video of those, to be honest, I don't think they fared better than the, the Sega entries, if I'm being honest with you. So as I've mentioned before, uh, T2, the arcade game, probably one of the most fondly remembered games released in the Terminator universe. And of course, going by the name alone, it's based on a game that many arcade goers, uh, including yours truly, would have probably played. Uh, sticking quite close to the plot of the film, the opening level sees you, your player, in the future. Playing as a reprogrammed T-800, playing, uh, helping the resistance uh, in their fight against Skynet. You face against endoskeletons, round and air HKs, hunter killers, and a robotic end of level tank. Uh, along the way, you can obtain bonuses from either the boxes found at the bottom of the screen, uh, usually if you just shoot them and maybe shoot them again, you can get those, or uh, strategic shots where well aimed at the heads of the endoskeletons that engage in close range combat. Uh, popping up in front of you every now and again, which without doubt is a lot of fun. Uh, your machine gun will overheat if you keep firing relentlessly, and you're only given a set amount of rockets until you find more, uh, so a certain air of careful planning is uh, required here. Uh, thankfully, a friend can join in on the action uh, if you've got another droid pad, or even better, my beloved, the Menacer. Uh, which, Sega, which was Sega's uh, OTT light gun uh, add-on for the Mega Drive to which this game plays fantastically with, it was almost built for it. Now you find yourself battling against uh, look-alike T-800 models in the bunker level. Uh, again, helping humanity where you can uh, where you shoot brick walls, barrels and boxes to get a better shot at your enemies. Uh, you'll find yourself attacked by 
weird orbs. Uh, not found in the movie here before moving on to the road to Skynet. Uh, eventually find yourself within Skynet and ready to travel back to the past. Uh, the future levels are nicely detailed. Uh, there is an air of ruin to everything and the battle looks bleak. Uh, certainly seeing up to Skynet is a breeze, but the pickup truck part where you must fend off waves of enemies from the air uh, and ground is absolutely pig, uh, which will swaddle a fair few bills early on. Uh, however, the variety is welcomed. The game skips to Cyberdyne from here. Uh, you're in the past, you've found both Connors and you are in a full on battle with the Cops and T-1000. With Sarah laying explosives, uh, protecting her whilst also destroying as much equipment as possible, achieving 100% damage here is key for the good ending of the game. Making your escape, you now have to protect the SWAT van from the T-1000 attacks. Uh, this is very hard level, leaving little time for error and playing out like the level leading up to Skynet earlier in the game. Uh, once you've made out of here alive, uh, the final level takes place in the steel mill uh, and requires you to blast a T-1000 to the edge of the molten. Uh, keeping in mind you will need to snag an explosive weapon to finally send it off the, off the edge into the abyss. Uh, if you don't, he will just keep on coming, it is uh, quite crucial. Uh, the game is actually really fun and perhaps the second best in the franchise on the system. Uh, the graphics are very detailed and yes, it isn't arcade perfect, but it's good for what it is. Uh, you'll find yourself wanting to play it again and again and especially with a friend. Uh, the music is pretty good too, nothing offensive here uh, at all and probably one that every Terminator fan should play. Uh, it's on the Master System, the Game Gear as well as the SNES, uh, to which the SNES and the MD versions differ slightly in places. So that leaves us with perhaps the best incarnation of both franchises, Robocop vs Terminator. Set in the not too distant future, the realities of both characters collide when the technology behind Robocop's invention influenced Skynet with the creation of the Terminators. With this, Robocop has an agenda to destroy Skynet whilst initially battling punks and machines in the past before transferring into the future later in the game. The game itself is based on the comic book series and was sadly never adapted to a movie or a TV series, which is a huge shame. From the offset, we find ourselves fighting crime from left to right in Detroit. You'll notice how gory this game is. Punks splatter into a bloody mess when shot, and blood soaks windows when you catch a sneaky shooter from the window. And at the end of the level, the Terminator you encounter sees you firing flesh off your foe. This isn't a game for anyone who doesn't like a bit of gore. The attention to detail is great on this one. Bits of newspaper fly from under your feet and the cityscape in the background really sets the tone nicely. It really feels like a Robocop game for the first part and a Terminator one in the later stages. Robocop is animated extremely well, up there with the best the console has to offer. Should you leave him static for a moment, he'll spin and retract his gun into his holster and retrieve it again. Gunfire will reflect off his armour and he'll raise his arm up in defence should you venture too close to an enemy. You're able to shoot from ladders in any direction, which is a simple thing that works incredibly well here. Often moving out the sight of an enemy to get a better vantage point allows for plenty of life saving. Speaking of which, you'll need to save hostages throughout the game, and if you really want to be a good cop, these are rewarded by filling your life bar again. If not, you can find the various baby food canisters that are littering along the levels. The construction of Delta City level adds a nice touch to those who are familiar with Robocop locations. Deemed the future of Detroit, OCP's upmarket city was still in the making at this point in time. This doesn't stop punks and even the construction workers themselves having a pop at you though, with Robocop 2 irritant Kane as the boss greeting you at the end of the level. Once he's been dispatched, you're on your way to the chemical plant, which I fancy is loosely based on Robocop, the first movie's climatical location. You'll have to be aware of chemical vats with fireballs shooting up in the air ready to wipe you out in a second here, as well as the usual punk selection, this is probably the least interesting level in the game honestly. There isn't much that happens than approaching it with caution while avoiding projectile fire for security robots helps. Things start picking up again once you're at OCP, this level has some great detail. You're basically tasked with trashing the place and saving OCP's hostages. You're up against the cops in addition to an ED-209 here. The music, although consistent across the board, really shines in this level. 
This completes the Robocop setting of the game, so to speak. From here, there are a number of levels that are set in the future leading up to Skynet. What I found here was the level design was less inspiring than the earlier levels, and the boss encounters got silly with the amount of time required to finish them off. I thought the T-800 with the minigun had simply crashed when it took so long to get anywhere, with no visual, real visual cues like the earlier fights. However, nothing prepares you for the fight against the giant T-100 head. Yes, really. Which takes probably as much time as it takes to finish the Terminator game featured on this list earlier. There's a wide range of guns in Robocop vs Terminator. Uh, your default gun is the Robo Auto 9 pistol, but having the plasma rifle really helps kill the T-800s in the later stages. Earlier on, the gun that looks like it shoots floating cans, or the grenade launcher if you want to get technical about it, really helps with the enemies on the ground below or across from Robocop, as you can control the direction of the cans, projectiles, whatever they are. I mean, all in all, it's a great game and a personal favourite of both Mike and myself. Although somewhat rushed towards the end and taking a huge difficulty upturn on the last two levels, it still absolutely shines. If you slap the cheats on and rip through it, it's what Virgin would have wanted, really. Don't forget to look for those bonus hidden levels as well, the in, in main stages. The game was released on the Mars system as well as the Game Gear 2 and the SNES, but the SNES version of this game is absolutely different, so don't go into it thinking that you're going to get the Mega Drive Genesis version because it is a totally different game. Without doubt, the greatest game I have ever played on the Genesis, uh, World Cup First Terminator. Perfect game, thank you Forbes. Uh, there is a few uh, cheat secrets that you can get out of this game as well. Um, including the weapon slit. Uh, usually if you if it's done right, you hear a machine gun burst uh, just at the end, and a terrible cop. Uh, if, again, if you get the cheat right, you get like this kind of like the zippy sound. Uh, there's a secret for this um, in the game. Uh, begin the, term, the training level, then move Robo all the way to the left, hold up on the D-pad, uh, press C to jump to the next level. Um, and when you're on the, the cheat level, you see a programmer as well, just like on this is, is photo, like in smug in the background. Um, so there you have it, a gander at the Terminator and Robocop games on the Mega Drive. Uh, have you got a favourite? Perhaps you disagree with us. Leave a comment below, tell us what you would like to see. Uh, until next time, 